All right, today's session is designed to help those of you who have scapular winging, and we're gonna give you a couple of exercises to help improve what's going on in the shoulder blade. And we're gonna go pretty specific, meaning we're gonna focus on the eccentric control of the shoulder blade. So with Elise, she's a swimmer. You can see she's got a swimmer's frame, but she's still got scapular winging. And she's strong, yet she still has problems because of this in the shoulder blade. So her scapular winging is generating issues of impingement type problems when she raises her arm up. Now, the eccentric control is the sort of major factor in her. And it's a lack of awareness of her serratus anterior. And part of that is because she's hypermobile. Now, if we look at Elise, she's got hypermobility that's quite full on. She's got really bendy fingers. Her elbows go past sort of zero degrees there and so she's got a lot of mobility going on which makes it harder for her to control her joints so when she raises her arm up or she raises say her right arm what happens is you might have seen that already let's slow that down let's go back again in a nutshell her shoulder blade sits a little bit out on an angle so instead of sitting flush flat right she sits her lower angle here her inferior angle is tilted out so you measure the whole shoulder blade, you can see the line of it right there's the triangle it's tilted that way. So what's happening is she's already on what we call a negative at the moment. She's supposed to be sitting at zero degrees. Now the interesting thing is, it's sort of not like weakness complete. It's more of a weakness from here to here because she can sit there and sit there absolutely flush, no winging at all. When I correct her, when I give her the feedback, she can do it. But when she rests, bang, she just hangs like that. And that's half of that is hypermobility. So her resting tone is so quite low, so she lets it hang, lets it switch off. But she can switch it on, so when she's swimming, it's not too bad, but it's not on all the time perfectly, and that's where she runs into problems. So when she raises her arm, you let her axe again, when she goes into abduction, when she comes up, up you go, there it is there. Can you see how that sort of went in, all right? So as she raises up, it goes a little bit more negative. It's actually supposed to stay stable, so she's supposed to stay at zero degrees, and then it rotates up when she goes higher. But she's already going inward. So she sort of, as she starts abducting, she's going too far in. And then so by the time she gets all the way to the top, she hasn't got enough abductions through the shoulder blade. She sort of gets around about 45 degrees. She's supposed to be 60. And the reason being is because she start off in the negative. So by the time she gets up, it's sort of too far behind, which means she has to do too much range of movement here to get her hand to 180. Now when she comes down, if you come down again for me, you'll see this slowly kick in. If she controls it, she's not too bad, but she goes quickly, that's when you'll see it, and then you see it at the end there. Go again for me, all the way up. Now come down faster for me. There, okay? So the whole thing so just let go. And that's, you know, she can't feel what's going on. Remember, serratus anterior is not very kinesthetic sort of muscle. You don't sort of feel like a bicep, okay? So you need a good mind and muscle connection, and that's where the exercises come in. So I'll show you what effect feedback does. One of the feedback is that I, I can correct it and she goes, yay, and put that down a bit. She can hold it, right? But I'm not here all the time. She needs something to give her feedback. So if those of you who have hypermobility or lack of awareness, I don't know where my shoulder blade is, you need an external resistance. If you haven't got a pop-up physio coming out of the cupboard, you need someone like this to put on to stimulate that serratus interior to work. And I'll show you how effective this is. So let's start off with like this. If you put your hand for me, Elise, okay? When she goes into protraction, and then comes into retraction, you'll see when she's in retraction, her serratus lets go. Now that's fair, when you go into retraction, you're working sort of rhomboids, therefore your serratus will work eccentrically and negatively, but her eccentric phase, just like you saw when she comes down, the eccentric phase of that rotation is where it's switching off, letting go, okay? So the same thing happens. When she goes concentric, she switches it on. When she goes eccentric, it turns off. And we need a co-contraction for her. We need her serratus you know, decontracting slowly, not just letting go. So the way to do that is if I give her a band here, so she's got a, if I pull this, I've got a constant force coming in here. So when she goes into protraction, right, when she comes back, what happens is she doesn't wing as much, okay? Because she's retracting, but she's got a slow resistance of constant protraction. So you can see instantly 
she is not winging as much, okay? Just with a bit of feedback of what to resist against. So I'm giving her brain a bit of like, okay, pull against this, which is improving her connection between brain and shoulder blade to keep that muscle firing as she goes into retraction. So this is a really nice exercise for her. Obviously, you'd attach this to a pole. So she just needs to put this around a pole, okay, with enough resistance that doesn't pull her over, and she just goes through protraction and then a slow, eccentric control. She's trying to train her brain to be more aware of that muscle to stabilize her shoulder blade when she moves forward and back, which is going to help her with her swim, okay? So this is a really nice way to warm up. I would do this one to try and improve awareness of what that shoulder blade does when you retract. It's eccentrically using her serratus. She's eccentrically protracting, if you like. It also helps with the protection part. So when she pushes forward, she's got a resistance there to strengthen it up, okay? But the biggest thing, she's not super weak, it's the awareness. And so try and improve what is happening between here. Because with hypermobile people like this, they don't have that tightness to give them feedback to the brain about where the position of their joint is. So this gives them that tightness, if you like, that sort of resistance to go, oh, I need to resist against that muscle, that movement there. Then the brain will use that muscle to resist that movement. Perfect, which makes the whole thing work a lot better. So that's her warm up. The second thing I want to do is using that in abduction. So if you go through abduction for me, have a kneel down there. Ow. Yep. So when she does, one of the exercises we get people to do is an abduction slide. Now, for some people, this works really fine. And you know, when you when you when you do this exercise, you push in through the wall and that makes her work as straight. But can you see what's happening there? So as soon as she pushes in, bang, it just goes. Okay. So if I give her this exercise where she pushes in the wall, and some people are like this where you know, they're already starting negative, so they're already winging out. It's really hard to try and then get that shoulder blade flat if you're already starting in a really sort of negative position. So for her to do the slide work where she goes through abduction, it's gonna be hard for her to even try and get that right. Okay, she's just sort of gonna get nowhere with that. So what we need to do is, it's a bit tricky, but she's gonna to have to put this band on, the same thing, and so, we give her the feedback of what she needs to do. So if she pulls on that and pushes less through the, through the hand, okay, she's gonna get better positioning to start with. And then when she comes up, she's just gotta keep the tension on. And then you watch what happens on the way down. So when she comes down here, where we saw that massive winging before and that loss of control, she's gonna be instantly a lot better. Look at that, she's staying absolutely perfect on the way down. So this is what I'm saying is, she doesn't have a, like a massive dysfunction as far as, oh, it's weak and you need to strength up. It's a mind to muscle thing. As soon as I provide that resistance and get her brain thinking about what movement she needs to do, it automatically switches on her serratus. So she can then maintain that nice scapular rhythm as she comes down. When that shoulder blade, the hand comes down, the shoulder blade comes down, then it's starting to go from about that point in there, stop there at least for me. So around about 60 degrees, she needs to be vertical here and stay vertical until zero. So go again, and she's doing a pretty damn good job of that. All right, so this is a really good tool for her to keep the protraction on while she goes through pattern movement. Super important for her for swimming. Now above head work, okay, she needs to know, we'll get, get repeated movement patterns, go again for me at least above head repeated movement patterns, telling her brain to get her serratus anterior working, to stabilize the shoulder blade, assist the movement so she doesn't get jamming through the shoulder joint, and she needs to do it on the way up, and especially for her, like we said, eccentrically on the way down, at this point here where the crucial part is, that's when she needs to slow it down and control it. And the good thing about this is she doesn't need to rely on maybe putting a hand to feel where her shoulder blade is okay, anymore. She doesn't need that. Some of you might be really tight, they can't even get their finger behind. This is the go. You just gotta tie it to a pole or something like that, get enough tension on it. So that tension gives her that feedback, that ability for her to protract forward against resistance. So that's gonna be really helpful for her. Hopefully it's helpful for you. See you next time.